you have a I'm going to confess because I don't have a stack of Gene Hoagland at the ready. Oh, no worries. I, I, I actually went to the damn Wikipedia just and I just clicked on discography just to kind of click on the Internet's uh, stack of Gene Hoagland pile of Gene. Right. And I, I, I needed a nap after I kind of read through it. <laughs> And, exactly. and and I want to say that Punch Drunk wasn't on there. What in the world? What kind of nonsense is that? I could have I, I don't. Been. I don't know. I mean, I can. I don't give a shit. I'll look at it while we're still. On <laughs> uh, and well, see whoever it. whoever threw that up there, because I guarantee you that's not me. I right. I don't even know what the Wikipedia has on it um it's got a lot it stops at 2020 i'll say that so they got okay. catching up to do um there i mean it's 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 impressive enough for it to be missing one or two things i'm only guessing but i didn't see punch drunk holy I'm not, and i i love the punch drunk uh thing that you did for a little bit right um, awesome. and Good someone thing. actually stole that cd from me so sure. I, I hope they're enjoying it as much as I did. It wasn't me. Oh man, I wish I had a copy of that, man. I have to go to YouTube anytime I ever yeah. want to <laughs> check out some punch. <laughs> yeah. Don't we all for our uh, our olden times? Uh, all right, I've always yeah. said the guys in the bands are the last ones to have any of their stuff. That, that's yeah. pretty true. We give it all away and then we never think that, hey, 30 years later, you might want to, you know, yeah. be able to reference this stuff you're like oh man thank thank god for streaming services and youtube and stuff like that now yeah, I, right? I, I can't keep a track <laughs> i can't keep track of of all the stuff I've, I've done you know i mean there there are entire albums i don't remember you know it's not like i was partying and drunk it's just i i don't remember a lot of records that i've played on and there's been times when i i hear something on Sirius or something or just you know you're you go to a club or whatever. There's some some something playing in the background. You're like, this sounds kind of familiar. And then somebody's like, dude, you you played on this. You know, so like, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> well, um, you you know, it's it was also fun to just kind of see things that I feel like I once knew and just totally fucking forgot. You know, right? That that uh. You know, in 1983, it says you did backing vocals on Slayer. Evil has no boundaries from Show No Mercy. Now, li now, now, listen, I don't think that I actually had heard that story. Do you recall what the fuck? I mean, oh, absolutely. You, yeah, I, tell, I remember, tell, us, yeah. tell us that. Let's pretend we have a campfire here. And <laughs> well, I've, I've had to repeat this story a number of times. So, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, it was, you know, I was at the time I was, uh, you know, uh, Slayer was playing all the clubs. And at that time, they, they were the heaviest band in the world. And I was really excited at the fact that nobody, I mean, their following was literally 30 people, 30 of the same heads would, would go to the shows all the time at the most, you know, and they played once a week everywhere and at the Woodstock or the country club or the, or Troubadour or radio city or the concert factory and all these places. And they they didn't have a large following and that was beautiful to me because I was like, this band is so heavy. Nobody will ever discover this band because right then in 19, you know, early 1983, all of my favorite bands, you know, like, you know, Maiden and Priest and Motorhead, they were all starting to get discovered by, you know, the other kids at the high schools and things like that. And so I was just like, man, all, all my favorite back pocket bands, you know, they're all real popular now, you know, Maiden is on MTV now and that kind of thing. And so when Slayer came along and, and, and Dark Angel for that matter, and yeah. you know, early, early Metallica, all that stuff, yeah. Slayer was the coolest for me because I was like, nobody will ever, ever discover this band. They're way too heavy. 
Rat and Quiet Riot and Motley Crue and all those bands can be on the radio and nobody's going to ever know who Slayer is. So that was always really fun for me. Um, and I obviously when you're going to club shows, when the band's playing clubs, they're really uh, accessible. You know, you can just go up to any guy in the band after the show. Good show, like your show, you know, like your band and all that stuff. And we all just became pals. And, yeah. um, you know, I was hanging around with them a whole lot at that time. And they would rehearse at Tom's house and in his garage. And a lot of the pictures you see from Slayer from back in the day, those are taken from Tom's garage, that kind of thing. And so Tom had invited me. I remember I got, he, I used to speak to Tom on the phone every single day when I was 15. Wow. And Tom was <laughs> so kind and so generous. You know, I had to call, I knew what time he got home from work. And oh, yeah, shit. He, he was the, uh, he was a, uh, a respiratory therapist at the time and i know what time you get home from work and i'd be calling every day and he was always so generous to god he'd talk to this 15 year old kid we talk about music and you know the band and all that kind of stuff um and he invited me to the studio me and my friend joel jason you probably met joel at some yeah. point yeah. especially back in the day yes um we were you know we were both hanging out with slayer all the time back then and so he invited us both down there and um i remember evil has no boundaries used to be Jeff and Carrie doing the background vocals. And I'm sure there's some old YouTubes of this kind of thing where it was just, you know, the guys were like, evil, my words, if I, yeah. evil, you know, it just wasn't real heavy, you know, and, and Tom's voice at the time, nobody sounded like Tom. Tom was very into like Kronos from Venom, you know, maybe some Lemmy, you know, those were the only kind of guys that were in the similar vein as Tom. And his voice was just so unbelievably heavy that I, I there was it was time for Jeff and Carrie to go into the vocal booth and do the vocals and um there was Tom and Carrie sitting on a couch right there and I was like hey dudes have you guys ever thought about like maybe getting like a big gang of dudes in there and and you know go evil you know kind of thing I was thinking like you know Y and T gang choruses you know kind sure. of thing like the, the big gang chorus um but from and, hell but from hell. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, they looked at each other like, great idea. No time like the present. Everybody getting the getting the vocal booth. And <laughs> so there was myself and there was Joel and there was Johnny Araya, Tom's younger brother. Johnny yeah. was like 14, 15 at the time. Yeah. And yeah, so Johnny was just reminding me uh, a couple of years ago. He's like, yeah, remember, they didn't have enough. There was like eight guys in there, and there was only one vocal headphone. You know, they didn't have like multiple headphones. So I had to, I had to sit there with the headphones, you know, the ear flaps, you know, flapped yeah. out so we could all hear the song. I was like, that's right. I forgot about that. I remember exiting the the, the vocal booth, and, you know, I just, uh, you know, Hanneman's next to me, I was like, I sang Devo and Hanneman's like, I sang Weebles. And <laughs> I swear to God, man, if you listen real carefully, got the headphones on, you can hear a guy going Devo and you can hear the other guy going Weebles. And oh, so, that's hilarious. That's pretty damn fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. kind of, um, that's like Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah right. it's like hidden yeah, totally. hidden treasure yeah uh no one knows this but on uh on meltdown uh watchtower of course uh, yes. doug keezer singing uh on the breakdown you know uh what? doug, doug yeah. keezer's in there we're doing gang vocals similar story and doug keezer sang break dance oh that's fun and you can <laughs> you can hear it you can totally hear it if you're looking oh, for it you can hear it yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna have to, i'll check that that's, out man. that's hilarious that's a good that's a good one now what about and then we'll we'll move on of course but these are sure. these are this is lore this is tales <laughs> of tales of the uh the la early thrash scene when there was no not really a, it was budding it was just starting to yeah there like, was no scene yeah it wasn't even in the water yet Right. right. Uh, so so it's kind of interesting to hear these, but it it could have been the same session. No, it wasn't. It was haunting the chapel. You're holding the, the kick drums down on right. on which song? Chemical, uh, that was Chemical, Chemical Warfare. Or, 
chemical warfare. Yeah. Yeah. And they were sliding that, across the, the, the room and you. <laughs> right. It was the same studio, a studio called Track Records in, oh, uh, in yeah. Hollywood. And that was right on on Melrose. Um, as a matter of fact, Mara and I just drove past where it used to be last week. Um, I, I and, recorded there, I think. Track Records, kick yeah, ass. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah, shoot. That's And Bill Matoyer was doing both of those yeah. projects. Is that how you say his last name? Right. 